Good morning, YouTube. Oh, man. There's no better way to start off the morning than a nice hot shower, some coffee, and getting ready for the day. So I got updates on our region system. And, uh, well, yeah. So we're, I went ahead and started rolling yesterday. Uh, I didn't record no footage. I was still doing uh, troubleshooting and stuff, you know, just to make sure that we're good to go. Uh, but, you know, I came uh, across a topic in my brain and I said, is this crap still worth even doing it? So, let me go ahead and get my truck. Let me go ahead and get to the truck. I'll go ahead and set you guys up in the new camera mount. And see how you guys like that. And uh, we'll discuss. Is it even worth still doing this? So worth it? Hey. So I did my pre-trip and I noticed that the fuel filter was a little bit, you know, starting to get to that point where I need to replace it again. You know, usually in the winter when they put this uh, either anti-gel on the fuel or they just put more, um, uh, man, I can't think of what they put in it. Not late. The corn stuff. You know what I'm talking about. It just makes the fuel a little bit more crappier tends to clog these filters up so I'm here at the petrol right now before I start my day so I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it because I have some at home but I forgot to grab one so I'd rather have one in the truck than not you know what I mean because uh, it messes up it gets clogged up and now you're on the side of the road for a $25 part $37 first for a filter. Golly. It's my own fault. I forgot to grab the filter, so you know, even though 37 filters, I mean $37 sucks for a filter. It's, it's better to have it than not. Because then that can turn into hundreds or thousands of dollars of, of problems. So I guess it's okay. I'll have a couple of extra ones at the house how do you all get your stuff you know I usually try to keep as many things as possible in my truck you know parts that that I need and use you know parts that are harder to get a hold of because when you're out here you're exposed and you know you're you're at mercy of wherever you're at so be prepared I'll see you guys in a minute I know that the camera is the truck is not moving the way it shows it up on the camera uh, i got this new mount uh, for the phone but i put it on the dash and i think it's a little bit too shaky so i'm gonna have to probably change it we were just in test mode you know what i mean um but you know so the video footage is you know so so you know what i mean because it, it kind of moves like this you know uh i didn't like that so i'm gonna have to try to find a different mount so you guys can get a little bit better picture because the dash cam at that point did a lot better. All right, guys and gals. So we're here in uh, Birmingham, Alabama, here at the Petrum. Well, it's actually McCalla, Alabama, but uh, 
truckers that are truckers know what I'm talking about and people that don't do truckers you know I usually try to give you guys the big cities because then you'll kind of have a reference point on where I'm at you know what I mean so we're in McCalla Alabama but it's very very close to uh, Birmingham Alabama so we're about to take off so the topic of the day today that I wanted to talk to you guys about and get your all's opinion, especially for people who are thinking of either entering the trucking industry, brand spanking you, or pe- people who are already in the industry. It might be a company driver. And then you got your owner operators, such as myself, that uh, have been doing it for a while. And the first thing that comes into mind is is this still worth doing in 2024 i mean it's it's uh quite challenging to say the least to be able to stay profitable in today's day and age you know everything's expensive you know look at that sign eight tires for 2500 dollars or four for 1300 dollars Max Tread. I don't even know what that that brand is, but anywho, um, as I was saying, you know, it's you know the fuel price has gone down a little bit. You know, I mean, it's hovering, you know, right around, you know, you know between three and four. But problem is that as fuel has gone down just a little bit, you know. Think right there here it's like 389 or something like that i fueled here uh yesterday uh freight rates have just 1000 percent tanked like it's just ridiculous you know i mean i was looking at the load board and you know there's there's loads paying a dollar 40 a mile 90 cents a mile like are you kidding me like there's absolutely no way that you can make money that way you just can't do it you know so I'm very how can you say it I'm very neutral with trucking I don't necessarily love it, but I don't necessarily hate it. You know, I'm very, very neutral. You know, I've been doing it for, you know, going on 18 years now. Uh, I did eight years company driver and the last 10 years I've done it as an owner operator. Uh, What I can tell you though, is even with all the BS, you know, having to deal with truck issues and buying parts and taxes and you know everything that goes to with owning a business you know it may be a very very small business you know it's just me uh at the end of the day you know you still have to run it like a business you know because that's what you are you you gotta you gotta see what it's 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 very different from when you're a company driver you just you just go with the flow you just roll just want to rack up as many miles as you can you know when you're an owner operator you got to take a lot into into consideration it's not just miles you got to look at what the load's paying how much money am i going to spend on fuel how much of that money goes to taxes how much money of that goes to uh uh, uh, uh breakdown you know uh, like saving for your breakdown and stuff like that there's just there's just a lot to it it's not just cut and dry where it's like oh it's two thousand miles let's do it you got to know your cost you know the most important thing uh, of an owner operator is knowing your cost what does it actually cost you per mile to operate you know um and there's a whole bunch of free tools online uh i'm not really gonna mention them you know because i'm not really too sure if i can or if i can't and well you know like if you just google it you know there's a whole bunch of calculators out there that you can put your expenses in there and um uh, you can uh, calculate your costs. So, 
yeah so is it worth it you know it really depends on an individual basis you know because for example putting myself as an example <laughs> because i only know myself as an example you know like I've been doing it for 10 years. My truck is fully paid for. I don't owe it, you know? And uh, I would probably say that the gold mine is, I know how to work on my own equipment. And that in itself is very, very important, you know? Cause I don't have to be depending on a shop to get my stuff done. Now don't get me wrong. Sometimes I do have to take it. Like I've told you in previous videos before where I don't have the tool you know and i mean i don't know absolutely everything you know i learn every I, I learn every day and that's what's gotten me to the point where i'm at every day you know that uh, i love to learn new new tips and tricks you know and if you guys have seen my previous videos where i'm doing uh mechanical work i try to share my little bit of knowledge but if there's somebody out there that's a mechanic and knows a better way of doing it you know i'm all ears you know, I mean, I'm not the type of guy that's like, no, it's my way or the highway. You know, there's been a lot of tips and tricks that over the years, even I've learned from other people watching YouTube, just the way you guys are doing it right now. And it's like, holy crap, like, I don't even know you can do it that way. Sweet. So I try it out. I like it. And I adopted that that way of doing it. So um, that, that, you know, I, I really, really believe that if I didn't know how to work on my truck. I really believe that I probably would have already gone out of business, you know, because labor rates are expensive. You know, I, I got that. I got that fuel filter right now. I didn't put it on right now. I just wanted to have it on the truck. But, uh, you know, if I would have had them put it on, A, I was going to have to wait because there was other truckers waiting. And B, you know, it, it probably would have been at least $50, $60 plus the $37 filter. That's a hundred bucks right there when you could just pretty much put it by yourself and you know just pay the cost of the filter and it's very easy to do it'll take you a couple of minutes to do and and, and you're on your way you know so going back to whether it's worth it for me it's been worth it um even with the current market right now it'd be challenging it, it is worth it you know because if it wasn't for trucking i wouldn't have anything that i have you know i mean not rich or nothing <laughs> you know uh, this truck's taken pretty much my money here lately believe me you know uh but you know i got got my little house you know i got my pickup truck my wife drives a nice car you know i mean we live just a regular normal life just like everybody else and we struggle just like everybody else does and you know i mean it, it, it's tough right now but I think the two factors that I have working with me is the fact that my truck is paid for I know how, and I know how to work on it you know now giving you a different example from somebody else you know just would just make up the name Joe I think that's probably not a good name but well we'll leave it at that we'll just say Joe uh, let's just say Joe has a truck that's a four thousand dollar payment you know, and maybe knows just a little bit about mechanical work, you know, then that's going to be a totally different ball game now because, you know, besides having your personal bills, now you got a $4,000 bill with these truck payments, you know, and with these truck payments for anybody that's thinking of buying a truck or anybody that's already in a truck or, you know, just, just in general, you know, the way it works is, you know, you, you got your four thousand dollar payment or whatever, you know, or three thousand or two thousand. I'm just giving you an example. On a, on a newer truck, you're probably going to be right around three or four thousand. Uh, it works just the same way as with anything else, you know, like with with the car that you that you're paying. You know, some of them may have warranty, and some of them may not have warranty. You know, and most used trucks. You know that you that you're gonna be right around that range two three thousand dollars maybe a little bit less it really just depends you know where you're at you know if you buy a 60 70 80 thousand dollar truck then you're probably gonna be right around there you know if you buy yourself 
a thirty, forty thousand dollar truck, you might be at you know fifteen hundred, two thousand, or whatever you know. But when that truck has an issue and it breaks, the bank don't care. You still got to pay that money, and on top of that, lost time and lost revenue and wages and you know parts you lose money and at the end of the day the, the bank don't give no crap what's going on they don't care if the truck's broke they don't care if your mom's sick if you're sick they don't care it's just like every other bill that you may have corporations don't give a crap what's going on in your life if you owe them money you owe them money you know so that's where it gets very difficult you know because like you got a truck payment and you know, if it breaks or whatever, now you got these extra expenses. You know, it, it gets very difficult. But you know, I've been I've been in this game long enough to know that although it sucks right now, because believe me, guys, it sucks. I mean, these rates are horrible. It's it's hard to make money right now, and that's the reason why I'm so OCD with my truck. I've said it before in previous videos. You know, I'm the type of guy that fixes stuff before it breaks because, you know, most owner operators are one major breakdown away from going bankrupt. I don't want to be part of those statistics, you know, so I try to do everything possible to have my truck and well run in order as best as I possibly can. I mean, even with good maintenance, that doesn't mean it's not going to break down, you know, crap happens. You know, this this last repair that I did. Which, hey, leads me to my next uh, deal. I got an update. She is working great, guys. We finally fixed that region problem. So it definitely was the DOC that was clogged up. And uh, she has been running great. She's done about three regions or so ever since I left the house. And uh, she's completed it with absolutely zero problems. Everything is good to get and um, I'm very relieved and happy that that fixed the problem and uh, I just I'm just happy <laughs> even though it doesn't sound like it uh, but but it was a challenge you know I mean diagnostics is not it's, it's, it's not it's not cut and dry as sometimes people think you know and I know that eventually once people actually watch my videos if you're watching hit that thumbs up button right now and that subscribe button you know what i mean hook a brother up but anyhow i know that eventually the comments will come in well oh you you know you put all those parts in you know that you didn't need to you know it's part of the diagnostic procedure you know what i mean uh sometimes it's not just cut and dry i went from lowest too highest you know that's usually the way i always recommend people doing things you know you're not going to go and replace the most expensive component in the system that you're working on and then if that doesn't fix it then you work backwards from there you know um i went you know in 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 the order by experience on what had worked in the past because those weren't the first times that i have changed those components with respect to the doc that one was the only original part now at this point everything's been replaced uh but what I did do, and what I usually do, and I recommend you guys doing as well, any owner ops, open up them ears, is, for example, I bought that dozer block, right? And you put that bad boy on, and she still kept doing the same thing. So here's where you got to, like, weigh the pros and cons. So I bought that part. I believe I think it was, like, what, like four or 500 bucks or something like that. And it was a nightmare to find. Uh, we finally found it. We bought it, and I think it had like a sixty-dollar core, or something like that. So I removed the old one, put the new one on, and obviously that didn't fix the problem, right? So that gives me the indicator that that previous part that was installed on there was still working correctly. So at this point, do I return it and get my sixty bucks back, or do I keep it and have it there as a spare? For me, in my opinion, I'd rather keep it. I'd rather lose the sixty dollars and have it here in the truck with me you know because you guys got to realize something with these trucks most of the parts that you get you know especially for an older truck you know mine's a 2010 cascadia it's got the series 60 engine in it 
you know, almost every component in these trucks is remanned. So just because you got it brand new, remanufactured at the dealer, doesn't mean it's going to be last forever and work perfectly. I've got in parts straight out of the box that don't work. So it's just good insurance, you know. I'll have it here in the truck. And if it doesn't, if the other one fails, wherever I'm at, just the way you guys saw me replace that uh, dozer block there at the parking lot at the pilot. I could do it at another truck stop or at a rest area or whatever, and I have the part with here on, on board. You know, a couple of months ago, I had the EGR valve go out. Uh, I had, I think it was, it was, it was before I started doing YouTube, so I didn't record any of it or nothing. Um, but it went out on me in Midland, Texas, right? And when the EGR valve goes out in my particular truck, the truck will still roll. You know, I have a little bit reduced power, but it'll still roll biggest problem is though that it will not regen so eventually you get to a point where your truck is fully derated so i pulled over in the truck stop and because i had prepared myself sooner i had a brand new one in the truck so i took the other one off and i attempted to clean it but when i was cleaning it i noticed that the that the position wouldn't return back to the zero position to the closed position to where it should normally be at it would get stuck so at that point, I was I knew that the bad was bad, the bad. You know, I, I did hook up the computer. It said that the it had EGR failure, and you know, I put the other part back on there at, at, at a Midland truck stop, and I was good to go. And it's been good to go ever since. Now, just to give you a little bit of insight on that, uh, once I got home, I wanted to go ahead and replace the damaged one to always have one here in the truck, right? To this very date today here currently it's still on back order meaning that if i wouldn't have prepared myself to have an egr valve on my truck i wouldn't have been able to get a hold of one now don't get me wrong you can always get a hold of stuff you know online you'll get one but the ones that are online they're like 16 1700 for a 400 dollars part crazy i don't know if you guys remember uh on the freightliner cascadia there was a moment there that they were still in the CPCs from the dash, the CPC force, the common powertrain controllers. And they were selling them in the black market for like five, six thousand dollars. And that's like a six, seven hundred dollar part. People were stealing them because they were on back order. You, you just couldn't get a hold of them, you know. And if you're in a position to where it's like you got a choice, even though it sucks and it's wrong and it's price gouging and it's stealing from people, selling it to them at six seven thousand dollars for more than likely a part that's got stolen you know either you buy buy that part and continue to roll and make money for your family or you're pretty much sol and you don't work so what would what decision would you make you know like you gotta work fortunately most regular Joes like me, you know, don't have crazy amount of money to just be sitting at home for two, three, four months. Now, don't get me wrong; everybody's situation is different. There is a lot of people. There's a lot of people out there that are owner operators or they have companies, small companies that are bigger than mine and more successful than mine, and they do things way better than me. And you know, it just all depends on the person. You know, on I, I, I tried. I tried getting more trucks and at one point I did have another truck and everything, but you know, dealing with drivers and you know, people just don't take, people just don't give a crap no more. I don't take care of nothing, you know, and it's just cost you money and cost you money and cost you money and cost you money. It, it just gets old, you know? So I was just, you know, the only person that you can depend on yourself for sure is, is yourself. You know, so I just said, screw it. I'm just not even going to have drivers anymore. You know, but, you know, what's, I would really like to get your all's opinion on what you guys think, if, if, if it's, it's, if it's worth it, you know, you know, so the main points are, you know, fuel tie, truck prices have came down a little bit, you know, rates are in the garbage, you know. If I had to buy a truck right now and go into the market right now, I wouldn't do it. There's no way. You know, have a truck payment and everything and, 
You know, if you're brand spanking new, you've never driven a truck before, and you're going to go right into it, I would say don't do it. You know, learn the industry first. If you, if you guys are company drivers out there listening to this, uh, and you've been doing it for a while and you want to make the jump, I would say do the jump for sure. Because you know what? Being an owner-operator has its advantages. You know, it's it's been good to me. You know, I've been able to do a lot, a lot with it. You know, I mean, it's just like anything. The biggest advice I always give people that are looking into coming to an owner-operator is this. I always tell them this. It is worth it. Is it scary sometimes? Yes. You know, because, you know, you have a major breakdown or like everything's on you. Like everything, 100%, everything is on you, you know, but it also gives you a lot more when the market is good, you know, and my number one advice for anybody who's joining the, the, the trucking industry as an owner operator this year, you know, if you already have experience or whatever is you have to learn how to lose. And then why do I say that? Because it's not if you lose, it's when you lose. At one point you will lose money. There's been times where I've ran a whole week Busted my butt, got my paycheck, and it all went to repairs. And I didn't keep a single dime. But there's other times where she's rolling great, and most of that money goes into my pocket. So, you know, it's a give and take relationship, you know? Sometimes you're going to win, sometimes you're going to lose. Obviously, you want to aim to win all the time, but sometimes that's just not possible. You know, learn as much as you can, and then make that decision if, you, if that's something that you want to do or not. But what I can tell you is this. Like I said in the beginning, I've been driving for 18 years. The one regret that I have in trucking is listening to everybody else veer me away from being an owner operator. I wish I would have done this sooner. So in other words, instead of having 10 years under my belt as an owner op, I wish I would have 17 years under my belt and maybe only one year as a company driver. Because I missed out on all that great time when the trucking market was great. And you were able to make money. You know, it gives you freedom to go wherever you want. I go wherever I want. I go home as, as long as I want. I don't have nobody telling me what to do. I do my thing. I don't have the boss. I am the boss. You know, and that, that's a great feeling. Where When you don't have to... I mean, don't get me wrong. It could be a double-sided story, you know? You know, being being your own boss is great until it isn't. <laughs> you know, because if since nobody's giving you pressure to do anything, you can tend to get very lazy and your business can go down if that happens. You know, you have to have that discipline of like, OK, it's work mode. It's time to roll. We, we got to go out and make money and not just be like, well, ah, you know, well, I don't have to leave. I'm just not going to. Well, you're not going to be in business very long if you have that attitude, you know. So, I mean, that's pretty much my opinion on, on on being an owner operator for me it's been you know it's been it's had it's had its ups and downs you know sometimes it's been great and sometimes it's been crappy you know but for the most part i'm neutral i'm neutral and i'm thankful for the what the trucking industry has done for me and you know i i started this youtube thing um you know for every reason that the youtubers started you know you want to try to do something to create a bit of a little bit of extra money on the side, you know. Any YouTuber that tells you that that's not that that's not the the reason why, I think they're full of it, you know. Now, don't get me wrong; I'm not saying that they don't have passion and that they don't like what they're doing, you know. But no one would be doing this, you know, and putting your passion at work if you didn't get paid. If these YouTubers didn't get paid these thousands of dollars or hundreds of dollars or what, or like me, that you don't get paid nothing at all right now, you know, like you're not going to be doing this for years and years and years and years and years professionally and not get a single dime for it. To a certain extent, it is about finances, you know, but that doesn't mean that you can't have passion by doing it. You know, I actually never thought that I would actually like it. You know, now that I've been doing it for only two months, I am not an expert. I'm not, I'm not, you know, but I think I've gotten a, a little bit better on my editing techniques and I, I try to give you guys a little bit better angles and, you know, add different stuff and elements in there, you know, and I find it that, you know, I actually enjoy it. You know, it's something different, you know, even though I'm talking to myself right now, 
<laughs> which I'm not. I'm talking to you guys, but you know, to me, I'm just talking to a camera. Um, I actually enjoy it, you know. So I put it in my head, you know, right from the beginning. Hey, this is gonna be a long-term investment, a long-term thing. It's not gonna be something that just yields, you know, results right away. You gotta be patient with it, you know. I mean, the, these videos take time, especially when you're brand new. I mean, I. That very first video that you guys saw, if you guys haven't watched it, go back into my vlog playlist. It's the very, very first one with the, the dozer injector. You know, it shows you how to clean it and everything. Go look at that one and go through the videos. And you'll see that the videos have gotten a, a bit better. You know, they're a little bit better structured. You know, they, they got a couple of cool new things in there, transitions and music and, you know, this and that and whatnot. And, you know, all this crap, you know, all this new stuff. And, you know, it's been just on my own learning, you know? So every time I learn a new trick, it actually excites me, you know? So sometimes trucking can be very boring and very lonely. You know, most of the time you're just driving here alone. You know, I mean, sometimes you're on the phone with the buddy or with the wife or with the, your kids or whoever it is you talk to, you know? But it could be very, very boring. You know, so. I guess you guys keep me entertained. And keep me busy. Because uh, then, I, you know, I, I film all this stuff. And even though the most frustrating part about making a video is editing it. It's, it's actually kind of the most exciting one, too. Because that's when you can put your story together and and when you're done you're able to feel proud on it you know and i know that my videos are not the most beautiful and the bestest videos in the world compared to other youtubers that have been doing it for years but you know what baby steps nobody nobody's born knowing how to do things so you know i mean I, i've learned a little baby steps at, along the way and you know i feel proud about what i've done you know and i'm gonna continue to put content out there you know i'm just hoping that you know people actually start uh seeing the videos and hopefully i can teach you guys something and you know i'm looking forward to when you guys start commenting and you guys can teach me stuff you know i'm not a know-it-all you know I i'm a guy that likes to learn and i can't wait until i actually start getting comments on maybe there's maybe there's something that i can do different that might yield a better result you know i mean You've always heard that expression that two heads is better than one or a hundred pets is better than one, you know, and with YouTube, the, the possibilities are endless, you know, and so, but I'll go ahead and leave it at that, guys. Um, we're already probably like at a 20, 30 minute video or whatever, but uh, I appreciate you guys watching on this short little vlog, um, you know, and comment down below let me know what you guys think let me know if you guys like the long videos short videos you want me to shorten it up lengthen it up you know it's it's kind of hard to give it a certain target because i don't really have a big audience right now so once i once i actually start getting some more people watching then i can start getting a little bit more input on what you guys like because at the end of the day it ain't about me it's about what you guys like you know you, you could be the best YouTuber in the whole wide world and be the best at editing, the best at thumbnails, and the best at content. But if you guys don't watch, it ain't worth nothing. So I want to tailor my videos to my audience, to what they like, whether it's a short video, long video, informative video, just do it fast, get to the point, whatever it is. And, you know, keep you guys entertained and watching a little bit on what it is to be a truck driver here in the United States in 20. 24. I'll leave it at that, guys. You guys stay safe out there. Peace out. I forgot to mention another important piece of whether it's worth it being an owner operator in 2024. And um, it also depends on your financial situation. You know, do you have a lot of debt? Do you have a lot of car payments and credit cards and this and that? You know what I mean? The more debt you have, and the more money that you are required to make just to meet those obligations, you know, but if you don't have a whole lot of debt, you know, say, for instance, it's somebody, uh, a young person coming into the industry, let's just say you're the, the, the youngest, I think it's 21 to be out here on the road and 
let's just say you're, you know, 21, 22 years old and, you know, you still might be living with your parents or, you know, maybe you just live in a small apartment, whatever the case may be. You know, let's just say that it's just you don't need that much money. Then maybe at that point it, it will be viable. You know what I mean? Even if you get a two, three, four thousand dollar truck, that might be your bis- your biggest expense. So you might be fine. You might be able to still make money, you know, but like me in my particular case, you know, I mean, I got some debt. I got credit cards and, you know, this and that and house and cars and this, that, you know, but, um, you know, and I and being for real, you know, I struggle. Sometimes I struggle to pay stuff, you know, um, but I know for a fact that if I had a two, three thousand dollar payment right now on a truck and then on top of that maintenance and oil changes and this and that. You know, it's, it would be like literally like nothing. Like I barely make it as it is, you know. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it really depends on your financial situation, you know, or if, or if it's like another person that, uh, you know, let's just say you got a couple of bills here and there, you know, but maybe you got 40, 50, 60 grand saved up, or maybe you got inheritance or something, you know, you have something to fall back on. Then, Maybe at that point you can still make it work, you know. Um, but you know, it just really it's really, really on an individual basis. So uh I'm just giving you my two cents on what I think over the years that I've been doing this. But you know, I mean, right now it, it it's hard, you know, right now it's right now it's just pretty much survival mode right now, you know. Uh but here in the last couple of years, you know, when there was uh, different people in powerful positions that can make change happen. It was good. I mean, heck, they paid you money just to get out of debt and go do the load. You know what I mean? I mean, it was just money flying there, there, back, back. It was, it was a good year, you know? And uh, what I did those years is I just, I got my truck as good as I possibly could, you know, I invested some money back into the truck and I put money away, you know, for times like these, that when it gets slow, it's, it's, you got a little bit of backup money, but you know, that backup money eventually goes and that backup money is definitely, definitely about gone. So uh, yeah, I just wanted to add that in, in there for you guys. Ah, man, it's like 9 PM. I'm, Barely going to eat some breakfast here at the Waffle House. Got to love some Waffle House. <sighs> I got to my shipper, well, my receiver. And what I find? It being closed. Then I look at my calendar and it's Martin Luther King Day tomorrow. Well, thanks, broker, for letting me know that they're going to be closed till tomorrow. So I'm probably going to be stuck here another day. Probably till tomorrow night, just to deliver the load. And let's see if they want to pay layover pay. So it's probably not going to deliver till like seven, eight o'clock at night. So it's the full day for free. And that's one thing I hate about trucking: our time is not worth nothing to nobody. Everybody just expects everything for free. Everybody wants high quality service. But nobody wants to pay the price for that service. They want to pay crappy rates, but they still want excellent service. You know, what industry do you know that, just to give you an example, you go to McDonald's and you want a Big Mac, right? Whatever it is, $16 or whatever it costs. What industry can you go in there and just say, hey, give me a Big Mac and I'm only going to pay $10? Well, at 16, well, I'm only going to pay $10. Take it or leave it. That's the way they, this industry is. They dictate what they pay for our service, but they want top-notch service. <sighs> trying to remain positive. I'm really trying to remain positive. But it's hard to be positive in the, in this type of market, this type of environment with all the negativity and everything going on around the world. It's hard for people to just look forward you know what i'm saying but i'm just gonna take a deep breath enjoy some food and 
I'm going to try not to get mad about it because at the end of the day, getting mad about it ain't going to change the fact that I still have to wait. So <sighs> that's my day. How's your day going? Mm, Got to love Waffle House. Oh, yeah. I guess this is my highlight of my day today. So thanks for watching. Now hit that thumbs up button. And that subscribe. Stay safe out there. Peace out.